Welcome to our final webinar in our series of webinars on the answers to some of your top fiber questions to our technical support team. My name is Wayne Allen and I'm the Regional Marketing Engineer for the Asia Pacific region for Fluke Networks and I will be your host for today's webinar. Today we're going to look at locating problems when they occur on a fiber optic link. Essentially we're going to answer that age old question that people have. Is it a connector? Is it a splice? Or is the fiber itself the issue that's preventing the application from working? There are three different tools that we often turn to to help locate a bend, break or some other event in a fibre optic link. Probably the simplest tool that we can use is a visual fault locator, often referred to as a VFL. A visual fault locator, such as Flick Network's uh, VisiFault, illuminates a fibre with a visible laser source. If the fiber is good, you know, you'll see the red glow at the connector and you can see we've got the red glow at the connector here with this one. But if there's a problem, the light will leak at the points where connections are bad or if the fiber is bent or broken. These work well if you can visually inspect the entire fiber run but not so great if your run is kilometers long. So a helpful tool is to turn the, what I refer to as the linky blinky on, and it allows the light to flash so that you can tell that, yep, that's the fiber I've got the light source connected to. And if you've pinched a fiber or you've got a break in the fiber, what you will find is somewhere along that fiber as you inspect it, you'll see the light glowing underneath the fiber's jacket. This sort of approach is good for bad splices or broken connectors, but not so good for looking for dirty connections, which may be causing you higher losses or even reflection issues with the fiber optic link. Another tool you can turn to to find problems down the fiber optic link is called an optical fault finder. From Fluke Networks, this is a fiber quick map. These tools allow you to quickly and efficiently locate problems down a fiber optic link. And they'll work on multi-mode fibers up to 1500 meters long, which is 4,900 feet. You can see high loss events, you can see high reflective events, and you can even locate breaks on the fiber. These tools are simple to use. It's a single-ended optical fault finder that uses technology very similar to that of an OTDR. So it allows you to locate those high loss connections, those bad splices, and look at the length of the fiber. The tools, because they're using reflected light, will see all the events down the fiber. And if your fiber is still active, it will also indicate to you that you have connected the tool to an active fiber. And best practice when using one of these sorts of tools is to use a launch cord, just like you do with an OTDR. And as you can see here on this slide, I've used a launch cord from our OTDRs. Let's have a look at the fiber quick map in operation. And over on the left there, you can see I have my fiber quick map connected to my multi-mode fiber link. And in this case, I'm using a launch cord and a tail cord from our OptiFiber Pro OTDRs. And it's good practice to use a launch and a tail cord. And with a tail cord here, I'm going to be able to force the light past my last connector. So if I've got a problem in the last connector, I will be able to see the problem. So along this link, the instrument, the quick, fi quick fiber quick map has detected five events. The fiber itself 
is 366 meters long and it's detected events at 107 meters, 158 meters, 212 meters and 263 meters. So why don't we take a closer look at what the instrument found. So here's our overall measurement. It has five events as shown at the bottom there. So this is the fifth event of five. The fibre itself is 366 metres long and we've exceeded the reflection limit that we have set. It's a very poor reflection number. So R at minus 20 there is a poor reflection number. So that's indicating that's the end of the fibre or that's the break in the fibre. In our case, it's the end of the tail cord. If we move along the fibre from the launch point, this is where our launch cord connects to the fibre under test. We're at 107 metres. The R there and the value of minus 49 dB is the reflectance. So this is a reflective event. And reflective events indicate that that's most likely a connector. So we have our first connector at 107 metres from the instrument, and it's the first of events of five. The next event, it's occurring at 158 metres. The reflectance is minus 44 dB, so we have a reflectance number. That indicates that this is most likely a connector. It's the second event of five. Now for reflectance, I've set my instrument at minus 45 dB plus and minus a dB. So this minus 44 dB is perfectly okay. Moving along the fiber, at 212 meters, we have an event. It's the third event of five. An instrument is indicating we've exceeded a loss limit. Now I set a loss limit of 0.5 of a dB for all events down the fiber. In this particular case, there's no R below the length. So this is a non-reflective event. It's not a reflection. It's a non-reflective event. So this is tending to indicate that I have a bad splice at 212 meters. And finally, at 263 meters, I have the fourth event. So I know, because I've got a tail cord on the end, that this is the last connector on the link I am measuring. And I've got a reflection limit alarm showing here. So this is indicating that I've got an R, so it's a reflective event, a connector, but it is at minus 43 dB. If you remember earlier, I set my limit at minus 45 plus and minus a dB. So this is indicating to me that at 263 meters, I have a dirty connector. So as you can see, the link failed with the optical loss test set, but the instrument was able to tell me what problems I had, where they were. So in this case, I'll clean a connector I'll redo a splice and then I can go back to my optical loss test set and certify the link again with all the problems now solved. If you want to consider it, the ultimate fault finding tool for finding problems with a fiber optic link is the optical time domain reflectometer or OTDR as we commonly refer to it as. And from Fluke Networks, this is the OptiFiber Pro. An OTDR calculates the signal loss based on the amount of reflected light, or, or what we call backscatter, that it detects. Using this sort of technology, an OTDR can be used for locating fiber breaks, bends, splices, and connectors with issues. And it will measure the loss at these specific events. An OTDR gives you the complete picture of the fiber optic link. 
As you can see here, I have got my OTDR connected up to a single mode link. I'm in fault mind finding mode here, so I'm using a launch cord. It's good practice to use a tail cord if you can get to the far end, but for fault finding, the use of a launch cord only is okay. You would not do it this way if you were certifying. And as you can see, we've got our traces there uh, for the different wavelengths and being single mode 1310 and 1550. And with Fluke Networks OTDRs, we process that information and turn that into an event map. And as you can see here with my event map, I have my launch cord at 160 meters. I've got 247 meters of fiber. And at that 247 meter point, I have a loss event happening. And the OTDR has detected that that looks like a bend in the cable. So whoever installed this 500 meter run put a bend in the middle of it that's causing me issues. With an OTDR, we can find exactly what's causing the problem with the link. We've got pulses of light going down the fiber and the optics and the electronics measure the time and the power of the reflected light. We then apply complex mathematics and using our software system, we can provide a user with a fiber if you'd like to call it a map of what that link looks like. So on the diagram here on the bottom left, you can see where your OTDR port is. So that's where you're connected to the output of the OTDR. Good practice, always use the launch cord and you can see the launch lead marked there. And the pinky purpley line indicates that we've been using compensation and that's our first connector. Connectors, we've got the connectors marked there, are reflective events. So the pulse tends to always go upwards. But mechanical splices can often look like a, a connector as well because of the way the two fibers are spliced together inside that mechanical splice. The reflection is not as prominent as what you get from connectors, but you do get a reflection. Whereas a fusion splice, and we have a fusion splice here, is typically a non-reflective event, and you see a drop off in the power level. If you mismatch fibers, you can get a step up as we have here, or a larger step down. And that's an indication that the light passing from one fiber to the other has experienced a mismatch between the two fiber types. When you get to the end of a link, you get a high reflective event. And when you get a high reflective event followed by a large drop off, that's indicating to the OTDR that this is the end of the link or this is the location of the break in the fiber. Any pulses beyond the end of the link, we typically refer to these as ghosts. And ghosts are events that the OTD TDR sees, but they are events that are not really there. And if you have a look at the right, I have a trace from the OptiFiber Pro OTDR. And as you can see here, we have multiple reflections. The higher the reflection, indicates the cleanliness of the connector. So if the reflection is low, like we have here, this indicates an extremely clean connector. If those spikes or pulses were coming up towards 15 or 20 dB, that would indicate that my connections are dirty. And so I have what appears to be four reflective events here with the final event being quite high indicating the end of the fiber. But if you look closely towards the middle, and I'll highlight that, 
that's not a single event that's actually two events happening very closely together and to an OTDR it's especially one like the OptiFiber Pro which has extremely good event dead zones and for multi-mode like this connection is our dead zone is uh, 500 millimeters you will see that this is actually probably a patch cord and if we take this a little bit further and go back to the event map here's the event map you can see that I've actually got two 51 meter cords connected by a two meter patch cord and so with the right OTDR technology, you can be the expert in finding problems in fiber optic links. Well, that's all I have for you today in this short webinar. If you've got any questions, please feel free to email us at apacmarketing at flutenetworks.com. If you would like a copy of our Top Fiber Questions ebook, just go to the web address below, www.flutenetworks.com, request Top Fiber Questions Digital Handbook. So, all the topics we have been covering in these webinars are from the Top Fiber Questions ebook, and presenting this information as a webinar has allowed us to expand on the information that we were able to provide you in the ebook. I thank you for your attention today and hope that you will join me for further webinars in the future. I bid you good day.